I urge you, at this moment of national emergency, to stay at home. Ever since Boris Johnson put the country into lockdown on March the 23rd last year, he's faced questions about why he didn't do it sooner. Other European countries, after all, had already taken similar measures, and there was a certain inevitability about Britain having to follow suit. Other governments across Europe are taking more drastic steps now. Are you absolutely sure you shouldn't be doing the same thing? It's clear that some in the public are beginning to question why you're not taking those more aggressive approaches, if you like, that we're seeing in lots of other countries. Some scientists have claimed that deaths during the first wave of the pandemic could have been halved if the country had gone into lockdown sooner. We can't ever know if that's true, but what has become apparent is that there is an increasing acceptance within government that it was a mistake to delay lockdown. Some of the Prime Minister's allies believe he will say as much when the promised inquiry into the handling of coronavirus eventually gets underway. So the most dangerous period is not now, but some weeks away, depending on how fast it spreads. The Telegraph has discovered that the turning point in Boris Johnson's thinking came on March the 14th, a full nine days before lockdown happened when a Downing Street data analyst presented him with evidence that the NHS would be overwhelmed in as little as three weeks. Until then, the Prime Minister thought his famous squash the sombrero plan was working, but he had been basing that assumption on projections that were out of date. If you ask, well, why are we doing this now? Why now? Why not earlier or, or later? Why bring in this very draconian measure? Uh, the answer is that we are asking people to do something that is difficult and disruptive of their lives. And the right moment, as we've always said, is to do it when it is most effective. But even at this point, having seen the grim predictions, the Prime Minister still didn't send the country into a full lockdown. So why didn't he act straight away? We know that Dominic Cummings, his chief aide at the time, was urging him to go quicker, as were some ministers. But the Scientific Advisory Group for Emergencies SAGE gave ambivalent advice on March the 18th, five days before lockdown began. It recommended school closures, but its advice on other measures was open to interpretation, allowing the Prime Minister to veer towards his liberal instincts. As I've said uh, tonight and, and in the past few days, we keep everything under continuous review and we will not hesitate to bring forward uh, further and faster measures where we think that is, uh, that is necessary. There were also warnings from scientists of lockdown fatigue, despite polling that consistently showed huge support for going into lockdown. We think it's very important to maintain public trust and confidence in what we're doing uh, throughout this, uh, this challenging time. Supporters of the Prime Minister concede that his tried and trusted method of putting off decisions until the last possible minute, which is often advantageous in the political arena, was a factor in the failure to take swift action leaving him open to accusations of dithering. Part of the reason for that delay is that there were very real fears within Cabinet that putting the country into lockdown would trigger riots on a similar scale to the violence of August 2011. As we now know, the government hugely underestimated the public's willingness to adapt to lockdown. That was a miscalculation that appears to have cost lives.